any any uh, given trek that we run will hike anywhere from 23 miles to 33 miles in a week. Uh, we do offer canoeing on portions of most treks. Uh, so there's an opportunity to, to backpack some good mileage, um, canoeing across the 10,000 acre Skychuk Lake. Uh, you have the option to do a four mile canoe trek one way and then coming back the opposite way at the end of your week. So you can start and end uh, in a canoe, which is pretty cool. Uh, the other option is a pontoon boat ride for that because most of our treks go in and out across the, the water. Uh, it is a seven, seven day trek and it's a crew based program. A crew meaning a group of six to 12 scouts, um, minimum of two adults, four youth, uh, no more than four adults on a trek, and then a maximum of uh, 12 total. Um, to some extent, we can, we can be flexible with that. We can be a little bit flexible with the maximum. Uh, we have taken larger crews in the past. Uh, we can't really take smaller crews though. So six is really the minimum that we need. And then we are really unique as far as high adventure bases go. Um, we accept 13 year olds. Uh, they, we do require 14 uh, for the ATV program. That's a BSA requirement, but every other program that we run, uh, we can do a program for 13 year olds. And then on your trek, uh, you've got a venture guide that goes with you for the first two days. And they're responsible for helping you orient to Z-Base, uh, keeping you on the schedule to make sure you're getting where you need to go, um, working with the program facilitators and providing any other assistance that is necessary. So a weekly overview of Z-Base. On day one, you arrive at base camp. Our arrival time is one o'clock in the afternoon. And basically from that arrival time, you are getting checked in uh, and set up for your trek. So you got check in, you'll move into the campsite in base camp, and then run through medical rechecks, uh, pack shakedown, uh, meal distribution, swim checks, and then all of that will take place. We'll also do dinner and an opening ceremony. And that's a pretty full afternoon. Um, as far as swim checks go, we do get this question a lot. We do have everybody that comes through do a swim check, even if they have a current swim check. And uh, we, we, we do this because there's, there can be a lot of discrepancy in the swim check, um, the way it's done. It all, everybody meets the same requirements, but there's a big difference between a strong swimmer and a not so strong swimmer. And our, our aquatic staff, they like to be able to see uh, what, the, what the strengths are of each individual swimmer. Uh, so on your trek, you're gonna be going to five different adventure areas. So, Every morning you'll get up from your wherever you're currently at and you will travel to your sec or to your next adventure area. And that travel is generally going to be through backpacking, but that can also be uh, like I said, it can be canoeing, it can be a pontoon boat ride. Um, and then depending on your track, there's a section of trail that will actually go across on a zip line. Um, you'll notice that day seven and eight are starred and that's because it kind of depends on your trek for what what day you actually end your trek if you have the uh, cable weight program as your last day uh, you're going to be in base camp that last day so you'll do that 
the Cape Wake program on day six, and then you'll be in base camp that night. Uh, anytime you, any time a crew does the Cape Wake program, they're housed and fed out of base camp. It's just a short day hike to get to the Cape Wake area. So um, can't really do it for the starting crew, but for a crew that's got Cape Wake on their last day, that's actually their last night in base camp. So they get to go home a day early. A uh, typical day of Z-Base, uh, you're gonna hike anywhere from three to eight miles. Um, and then you're also gonna do several hours of program. Um, when you're in a program area, you are gonna be probably the only crew that's in that area. There might be a second crew, depending on itineraries and schedules. Uh, all of our areas are set up to be able to accommodate more, more than one crew, but uh, we want to try to make it easier, make sure that you guys have all of the time you need in the program area and that you really get a good quality program. So you don't have to fight to get into a program. It's not a situation where you're gonna, if you're not there by a certain time, you're gonna lose your program. Um, we do, we do kind of need to know a timeline for when you're gonna be there. And that's where we ask you guys to try to get up early, start the day early, get to your program area with plenty of time to get through all of the program, but also be able to have some rest. Um, hiking even eight miles, uh, the average crew hikes two miles an hour. So you can, if you're leaving early, you can get to most program areas before noon. And then that still gives some time for a little bit of a rest break and then a good solid afternoon program. Uh, meals and housing are also gonna be very dependent on your, your day at Z-Base uh, because every meal, or sorry, every Every day at Z-Base is a little bit different. It depends on what you're doing and where you're going and what your, what your adventure area is. Um, so we have some world-class facilities at Z-Base. Uh, Z-Base came about as part of a $26 million capital campaign uh, that was done about eight years ago. And so we have literally multi-million dollar facilities. Um, we are really unique as far as high adventure bases go in that all of your housing is provided. So you don't need to carry a tent. And I'll go a little bit more into housing uh, a little bit later on. Um, also in every, every area, tables, uh, shelters, and water are provided. So picnic tables for you to cook dinner, uh, socialize, gather, et cetera. Um, they're all covered with a, basically a carport canopy. And then we have fresh water, potable water in every site. Uh, so you're not having to filter water. You're not having to, you know, cook your dinner on the ground, stuff like that. Uh, we're also pretty unique in that uh, latrines are available in every area. So you don't have to dig holes. Uh, meals are very unique for Z-Base. Uh, we have a couple of different meal options but it's all dependent on your trek. Pretty much every trek has a series of trail meals. Um, some of them more or less than others. Every trek has the same number of breakfast and the same number of lunches, but dinners get a little bit special. Uh, for our treks that have the sporting clays program, a barbecue meal is provided from the staff. Uh, so that's a meal that you don't have to carry the, the food for. And then the same with the Turkey Creek Village. Uh, there's a truck wagon stew that's made. Um, the staff will actually help facilitate that, but the crew will make that stew with ingredients provided. So those are two meals that you don't have to carry the food for. Um, and then in the dining hall, obviously you're beginning and your end day, uh, you're eating in the dining hall. With the Cable Wake program, uh, you're staying in base camp. So those are meals that you're also eating in the dining hall. So for a pro tip, if you just really don't want to cook trail meals, especially the trail dinners, 
Uh, there's a couple of treks that have Cape Oak Park, Sporting Plays, and Turkey Creek Village. Uh, I think the red trek is one of them. So on that trek, you are only carrying two trail dinners, uh, which means you're carrying a lot less food and you're cooking a lot less. And you're eating a lot better food than you would typically see on a backpacking trek. Uh, housing. We have some really, really cool housing at Z-Base. Um, we have Adirondacks. Uh, Adirondacks are three-sided cabins. So they're, they're basically uh, shelters with bunks in them. Uh, you get a really nice cross breeze through them if the winds go in the right direction, but it's also a really great wind break. Uh, I think on the rare occasions that it gets pretty chilly at night. And we have those at the Aerial Adventures uh, mountain bikes and the ATV areas. We also have a bunkhouse at Turkey Creek Village. Um, that bunkhouse is like it sounds, but it's actually part of our, our Western Village theme. So um, it's a really cool facility. It's part of the Western Village and it's actually air conditioned. So, you know, you, you get to go into this Western Village and spend the night shooting guns, spend the day shooting guns, the evening cooking a chat wagon dinner, and then that night you get to crawl into an air-conditioned bunk. So that's pretty cool. Uh, tiny cabins, which you can see in the picture there, um, are exactly that. They are tiny cabins with bunks. Uh, we have them at the aquatics area, the sporting plays area, and the equestrian area. And those are all air-conditioned. And those are really cool. Um, because they are so small, most people don't actually run the AC all night long. They run it to about two in the morning and then they get real cold and then they shut the AC off because uh, it's just, just a really small space. So it's a really great way to cool off at night. Uh, at the Ninja course, we have our infamous tree houses. Uh, these are really pretty awesome. They're, they're basically bunk houses that are elevated 30 feet in the air and they overlook uh, actually Mud Creek on Keystone Lake, which is at the southernmost end of our RV base property. Uh, it is probably one of the best views throughout the whole of Z base. It is, it is gorgeous. It's a great place to just look out the window and catch the sunset and it's a beautiful place. And then in base camp, we have wall tents. Um, so wall tents are provided with cots. Uh, that's probably the least glamorous housing that you'll get throughout your trek, but we're really fortunate that we actually, we don't require anyone to bring a tent. Uh, hammocks are welcome. We do encourage hammocks, but we do caution that not every area has these big, beautiful trees like you see uh, in the picture here. Um, as you get further south, trees get a little bit sparser and a little bit scrawnier. So not every site is suitable to hammocks. Um, if you have questions about which areas are better for hammocking or if it's worth bringing a hammock, feel free to reach out. Uh, and I'm always happy to talk about that. Uh, trek schedules. So we have a new trek schedule out this year. Um, the website is current and updated with that schedule right now. Uh, but basically, it shows you everywhere you're going based off of a trek itinerary. We, we offer eight trek itineraries, and every trek itinerary happens once a week. Uh, so we have four treks that go out on Saturday and four treks go out, that go out on Sunday. Um, this is the really critical part. If you are looking for a specific date or a specific trek, that's going to that's going to be what you need to keep in mind when you're scheduling. And you need to be really diligent on um, getting that. You know, if you're, if you're looking for like the orange, orange trek on June 10th, uh, you need to go ahead and get that booked because once that's booked, we're not doing any more. So uh, we have a limited capacity with how many treks we can run in a week. 
we offer every trek just once a week. So if you have something in mind, uh, you need to you need to really get that nailed down. Don't wait because someone else might might snatch it from you. Uh, so we have some pretty awesome adventure areas. Our our programs, I think, are second to none across any high adventure program in the country. Um, to start from the top and work down, our aerial adventure tower is at the very top of the map there, um, up on the point in Skytook Lake. It's a 70 foot tall adventure tower and then a 1300 foot zip line. And that zip line actually crosses a section of Skytook Lake. Um, Moving a little further down south, we have our ATV area. That is a really awesome program. You actually go through the ATV Safety Institute course and then you go on a trail ride. So you, even if you have zero experience with an ATV, uh, you get all of the instruction, you get to learn all of the maneuvers, how to do them safely. Uh, everything from learning how to take care of your ATV to how to swerve around obstacles, how to go uphill and stuff like that. And then it's all capped off with the trail, trail ride where we put those skills to the test. Uh, our sporting place facility is absolutely phenomenal. It's an 18 station uh, competition sporting place course. We, we do use it for competitions every year. Uh, it's got a five stand station where you learn to shoot and you practice shooting at plays from all different directions. Uh, we've got wobble traps, we've got rabbit traps, we've got, uh, we've got true pairs, we've got pretty much anything, no pun intended, pretty much anything you can throw, we've got it. And then we can also do a uh, five stand flurry, uh, which is absolutely phenomenal. It's super awesome. Um, it's basically over the course of a few minutes, 50 clays go flying all at different times in different intervals, and five people are all shooting at all the clays at the same time. Uh, Turkey Creek Village is another really awesome course. It's a cowboy action course. Uh, you do a three gun program there, so you, you can do rifle, you can do pistol, and then there's even a shotgun component, uh, as well as the muzzle loader. Um, and then you end the night in the cantina where you're sipping ice cold root beer and making a, a truck wagon dinner. Um, our mountain bike course is awesome. It's a lot of instruction as well, very hands-on instruction. Uh, we get a lot of people that come in and they've never rid ridden a bike before. And at the end of the day, we've got them mountain biking. Um, and we take them on a pretty awesome trail ride. Uh, we've got really, really dedicated staff that run that program that are really passionate. And uh, we have heard that that is one of the best programs that we have. Um, we also have our equestrian program, which is again, really, all of our programs are cool, but <laughs> the equestrian program is really cool. Um, so with that one, they take them through everything from like brushing and saddling a horse to the trail ride to, uh, you know, unsaddling the horse. Uh, they take them through the whole thing. It's a, it's a super impressive program. Um, that, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great program. And then there's the jet ski, uh, the jet ski program. Aquatics Adventure is one of our absolute favorites. Um, we do an instruction course with that as well. It's a BSA uh, jet ski program course. Um, and then similar to the ATVs, we go on a trail ride uh, all around the lake. And it's just a lot of fun. You, you get to see scouts really come alive. You get to see the, uh, how much of a daredevil they are when they run a jet ski up to, you know, 35 miles an hour across open water. Um, 
it, it's a it's a great program and there's a lot of education and a lot of safety that is built into it as well. Our Cable Wake Park is one of a kind. We are the only scout camp in the country that has a Cable Wake Park. Uh, it's a closed loop track. Basically, it's a quarter mile uh, loop that works on a pulley system similar to like a ski lift. And we do kneeboarding, we do wakeboarding. Uh, we do instruction with that, so you don't have to have that any kind of experience. Uh, kneeboarding is super easy and it's super fun. Wakeboarding is a little bit more challenging. I myself have never gotten up on the wakeboard, but I have a lot of fun on the kneeboard. Uh, our Ninja Warrior course is at the very far southern end of the, of the map there. It is actually on a completely separate lake. Uh, so the cool thing about Z-Base is we are between two lakes on 40,000 acres. So at the north end, we've got our, our COPE facility, our aerial tower. And then at the southern end, we have our low COPE, our, our ninja course. And we run that as a team building program. Uh, it's a phenomenal program. It's a lot of fun. It's absolutely challenging, but it is a really unique program. And then finally, we have base camp. And base camp is our launch point. It's our launch point and it's our ending point. Uh, we have a lakefront. We have our aquatic center with two pools. Uh, we have our dining hall. We have our trading post. We have our administration area. There's a lot of really awesome things to do at base camp. And then uh, we have, again, one of our best, best views is our amphitheater up on top of the hill where you can go up and you can catch the sunset in the evening and it's never, never a disappointment. So our staff is probably, in my humble opinion, the most impressive staff of any, any camp that I've been at. Uh, we hire 18 and up. So we hire mature people. We hire people who both been involved in scouting, but have also not been involved in scouting and can bring other experiences. Um, we hire people with attitudes that can't be beat. Uh, I, I've said it time and time again, I will hire someone for their attitude and then teach them their skills because our attitudes are what make our program so great. And we have some phenomenal people who help run our programs. Um, all of our directors are 21 plus, and they are all experienced, they're all qualified, and they're all excessively trained, and they will never let you forget how qualified and experienced they are, at least on my end. Uh, they will never let me forget that. But um, we are really excited. We are bringing back the majority of our, our directors. Uh, we're actually bringing back the majority of our staff um, overall. I am. I, I am hiring for the summer, so I do have positions that I need to fill, but the ones that are coming back, I'm super excited about, and we have people who are coming back who have been involved from the very beginning, from, from our very, well, our very first beta trek was in 2018, but our, our second beta trek was in 2019 when we really started opening up a lot of our programs, um, and we have two individuals who have been involved since that beginning. We have a lot of people who, who came on board in 2020 uh, that have just grown into the program and done amazing. And we have people who joined in in the last two years who are, again, just really growing in and taking ownership of the program. Um, and that's really, I think the best way to describe it is our staff take ownership of the programs. They are very passionate about it and they, they share that passion with crews. Um, I did want to point out, if you've never been to our website, zbase.camp, it's got all of the resources that you need, um, but specifically our Trek resources page. Um, if you go over, I think it's the third or the fourth link 
at the top of the website. Um, that's got things like the leader's guide, the links to the jet ski waivers, um, the training for the jet skis, the ATV training, the all the waivers, all the training, and then just anything else that you might need to help help understand what goes on on the trek, what things you need uh, to be able to prepare for the trek. Um, and then it also has how to, how to log in to the registration system. So once you've set up your, once you've set up your track, then you can log back in. And if you need to make changes to participants or you need to pay um, registration fees or something like that, there's a handy dandy information sheet on how to log back in and do that. So with that said, registration for 2023 is currently open uh, and it is currently filling up. Um, so like I said before, please, if you are looking at a trek for 2023, uh, go ahead and get that booked because once it's gone, it's gone. Uh, you can do any color of trek any week. You can do any kind of trek on any given week, but once the purple trek on the 10th or the 11th is closed, then it's closed. So if you're looking for a specific trek on a specific week, go ahead and get that booked so that you don't lose it. Questions? Any questions? So we had one question here, Jacob, about uh, 18 to 20 year olds and how they're classified. They are classified, that's a great question. Uh, they are classified one of two ways. Um, I'm assuming since you're asking for 18 to 20 that uh, you're asking for a uh, Scouts BSA member. Uh, they would be classified as a adult program participant. So they would they would count as an adult, but not as adult leadership. Uh, they would need to register as an adult, go through the YPT, all of that stuff. But they do not count towards your supervision. They can count towards the wilderness first aid uh, requirement. Um, if it's a venture crew, then obviously they are a youth participant. Any other questions? A uh, question here, do the adult leaders get to do the same thing as the youth? They do. Um, all of our program, we really encourage adults to get involved. So obviously they're backpacking, they're canoeing, but they are absolutely welcome to do the shooting, do the climbing on the tower, do the ninja course, all of that stuff. Yep, we, we do encourage adult participation. Any other questions? All right, well, if you have any questions later on, uh, feel free to reach out to me. You can email me at jsouthwick 
at okscouts.org. Uh, you can also call me at 918-392-1228. Um, that's my direct line to the office. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. We're always available. Uh, happy to help share information if you want. We are happy to make a unit presentation, make a unit visit. Um, we're here to help you support you and uh, help you achieve your high adventure goals. So 